Today, I want to talk about the meaning of being gifted. There is a difference between being gifted and being skilled. Big difference. One, being skilled is being consistently in touch with the ability to do something that allows you to reach an outcome and get results. Being talented or being gifted is not the same thing. Having a talent or a gift demands of you to be aligned with your spirit. Then you become the vessel to what appears like a skill, but is not a skill. And when you approach something with a talent or a gift, it is not always reliable. And the reason why it is not always reliable is because you have to be aligned. Your mind and heart should be aligned with your spirit. And when you are, only when you are, can you channel your gift and talent, which will exceed all expectations. It may even exceed some skills, or it may not. It really depends on the level of your talent. Because you can refine your talent, you can refine your gift in a way that it becomes a skill. But when you are not very familiar with your gift or talent, and, and then you just bring it up in the spur of the moment, you just tune into it in that moment maybe you will feel like everything is just so easy because you're in that very specific mindset but once you're out of the mindset once you're out of the flow then it's like it's gone and then you're back to your ordinary self and then you ask yourself how did it happen i wish i could be more consistent with my gift my talent and that's when you go and you study something that is aligned with your talent or gift in hope that through this skill, your talent can shine. Very rarely can a talent or gift just be dependable because it isn't. And many people, including myself, for many years have depended on talents. And that is your downfall because you will never specialize in a way that it becomes a skill that can deliver an outcome or a result. So if your goal is not to get a result, but just to bask yourself in your talent and your gift once in a while, then that is perfectly fine. But if you have as a purpose or a goal or a vocation to fulfill, then you have to find a way to channel that talent into something that resembles a skill, something that is more consistent and grounded in the five senses in reality. Evoking that state of being perfectly empty so that you become the vessel, that is not easy. You don't want to be resorting to external use of substances that would put you in this state of mind because then that becomes the very thing you have to depend on in order to bring about your talent. It will never be part of you because you're using something else. Specialize in a skill, and this is what I did for the past nine years. I focused in studying numerology, but I was never content with the divination tool itself. I made it very clear my goal in diving into numerology back in 2014 was to render it a practical tool. Imagination is part of the talent. Understanding what imagination is is very important because imagination can just be at the very basic level, just what it is, what we all know imagination to be. Images, something that is not here. Imagination, as we all know, is something that does not exist, it's not here yet. And so we might fantasize about something that we may never really get. And most of the people will settle down with this idea that, you know, I can just fantasize about this. I will never get it. And because they have resolved in thinking this way, it has become 
absolute that this imagination will never be anything else. It will remain imagination, just for the sake of imagination. But if you begin to take imagination seriously by bringing it into the five senses, the alchemical process of turning lead into gold kind of work, unrealistic. Because you're dealing with something that is in nature, not here. To make something not here become tangible and real, then you have to do a lot of things. That floating ball of idealism is perfectly round in your head. And when you bring it into the five senses, the realm of chaos, where everything is imperfect, you have to do a lot of things in order to make it look decent. You have to start chiseling, or whatever it is that was initially a perfect circle ball has now become something that is everything and nothing because you're giving it structures as you bring it into the five senses. When someone wants to use imagination to create something, to innovate, to invent, to change the world, if you want to change the world, if you want to revolutionize the world, well, first you have to understand what the world is about. So you have to understand the structure of the world, the limitations of the world, the rules of the world. What is my perfect circle? Okay. Now look at your perfect circle and look at down there. What is, what is all around? What is the box you are going to fit that circle and ball into? That perfect circle and ball might not fit into this box because it was built to sustain human life in a way that humans are grounded in the five senses. So if you're bringing something from the sky into the physical world, you, have to, you better be prepared to go through a process of, like I said, transmuting lead into gold. People term something impossible when they do not have the patience or the time or the means or the solutions to achieve what they want to achieve. So then it becomes impossible. Anything impossible is a dead end. We want dead ends only when we die. But if you are persistent, my friend, with your dream and vision, then there are no dead ends. Unless the perfect ball you're bringing down into the box, which you happen to be inside as well. If in the box you are committed to do other things, also important, then you have to expect the ball to be reshaping itself to whatever commitments or limitations you have. So that if you have a lot of commitments and duties and responsibilities, Perhaps that perfect circle is no longer what it looks like, almost unrecognizable. But you have to find your way to make it recognizable again. That's the longest process because how much time do you have on Earth? But let's say you have a lot of time and you've chosen to not be committed to anything else and you prioritize your dream because dreams require to detach, to float. You're no longer part of the normal ways humans work. Tuning to a different wavelength, you are now on a, playing on a different server. And so you have to look around. Who is in this server with me? Humans are social beings. And so if you play alone, you have to be quite determined and know what you're doing and what you want to do, where you want to go. If you're like me, you have the vision. You've been bringing it down, you've been putting it, shoving it into the box, poking holes into it, realizing that you poked the ball that you did not know would explode, and then now you're picking up the pieces. Now you're looking at each piece and then you try to piece them together. Now it looks like somewhat like what it originally was, now it's just not the same and now you go through this process of grieving of disappointment for two months and then you come back to it and you look at it and then you're like okay i didn't do this and then you're back at it 
market and then you're like okay now what what can i do in this process of this cycle of being disappointed and just not really knowing where you're going is necessary because you are dealing with imagination you have to give it a shape because you're making it relevant to this world to the people living in this world unless you want to be a pioneer and invent for the gods above but if you're creating if you want to serve humanity then you have to understand the people that you want to serve you have to understand their quirks their beliefs their limitations the demands and expectations of those in your close circles including family and friends what lies in the future does not exist unless you give it shape in a way that is acceptable or understandable by the people living in here in this current timeline and so you have in that vertically signed a contract for working alone independently in solitude unless what you work on has already been implemented into the structure the framework of society and so you're not too lost you're not dealing with the entire circle itself now you're dealing with pre-made shapes it's like someone else has done the work think about all the great thinkers in the past they have done some work they have invented a couple of things that has changed the world and so this is a more efficient way if your goal is to be successful and make money then you can directly access the prototypes that are out there you are on your own because you most likely not have whatever it is that you want in your mind to be realized in your lifetime because you're drawing something so far from the future and you're implementing it here the world is not ready for it the reason why we often hear someone is ahead of their time it is because they are ahead in terms of imagination the world is not equipped is not conditioned to understand certain vision and idealism if you want to do something that is, that is life changing that is possible in this lifetime before you die as you're listening through this you see how when you're using the gift and the talent of imagination which is part of many people who can foresee has this ability to foresee and you can foresee things in very different ways depending on your personality you can foresee with your feelings emotions or you can foresee with your brain your mind some can foresee with their five senses and some can foresee by working on the machines everyone can foresee differently when you have this ability to foresee it means you have this ability of shaping and manipulating imagination transmuting imagination so that it can become something that moves society forward now to what degree it's going to depend on the type of vision you choose if you choose a vision that is not too high and that does not take too long and that somewhat looks like one of the prototypes that already exist so then that is the sweet spot when you find the sweet spot in between that's when you can nurture the genius within you by utilizing your gift because you know that if you do not find the way to utilize your gift you will feel unfulfilled Throughout these 9 years, I have found the way and now I want to share the map. There is just so many entry points to nurture, to grow, to awaken the genius within, the, the gift of imagination. Some people will have it more, some people will have it less. It really doesn't matter because the amount that is meant for you will make sense to you. What kind of genius do you want to be? What kind of innovation would you like to manifest in this life? The nature of innovation comes from the genius profile, but the genius profile is, is more than just the title itself. It is it is part of everyone, but not for everyone to develop. It is a calling, the desire of the heart, the desire to fulfill something that you know you have to do 
And this is why geniuses are loners. But of course, you need a balance. You know? And living in this day and age, we have enough resources to be smarter geniuses so that you don't end up poor, unrecognized, and alone. So let's change all that. And this is the Thinker Feeler. Like, subscribe, share my video if you think that you have someone else who might understand what I'm saying. And stick around.